Welcome to Haunted Newfoundland Libraries, where we talk with staff across the province and share spooky library experiences. What scares you? Sounds? Feelings? Seeing something from the corner of your eye and when you look, there's nothing there? Let's listen to Angela's experiences from the Pasadena Public Library. We actually have a ghost that lives at our library. Causes a bit of mischief at times. I've noticed it started about seven or eight years ago when we had a big bunch of books that was donated. I'm, there was three lots of donations, so it just came in as one big donation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, it came from three different people that had passed away. Oh. So I'm wondering if it's one of their spirits that's still attached to their books. That's weird. Oh my yeah. God, that's so cool though. There's a cold spot that follows you around the library at times. It's never in one stationary spot, so it can't that be. That might be nice during the summertime. Oh, it is really nice in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> but in the wintertime, not so much. <laughs> it's, and books fall off the shelf. Just one book at a time, and it's not, paperback books that are on a rack that could fall off. These are hardcover books that are in the shelf with the bookends tight. Yeah. You can notice that every now and then one book is starting to move out and then all of a sudden it will drop to the floor. I usually go pick up the book, I look at the type and I say, thank you for the recommendation and I put it back on the shelf again. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. But one day there was a teenager on the computers and we have an upper level at our library as well. It's not, there's no books or anything after we use it for programming. Yeah. It's completely open to the library. And he had turned around his chair and he turned back around. He said, is there somebody upstairs? I said, no, there's nobody up there right now. He went, but I just saw somebody walk past. Ooh. Yeah. He said, I described the person. He said, well, it was more of a shadow impression than a person. I said, okay, so I'm not the only one that's seen this thing. Because <laughs> I have seen it go past upstairs before. My substitute has had, you know, encounters as well. She said one night when she was subbing for me, like, we're open until 8.30 at night sometimes. So she's gone to the washroom. When she's come back to go into the library again, she's felt this really evil presence, like that somebody doesn't want her there. Oh. Now I told her it's her own fault because she keeps threatening to get the pastor in to do an exorcism on the library. <laughs> I told her it was her own fault. You can't kick somebody out of their place. Yeah, you can't. No wonder they feel a little bit uh, antagonistic towards you if you're telling them, you know, I'm going right. to get the pastor after you. <laughs> Right, but it, there are times when you do feel uneasy there, and there's no reason for it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. I can't wait um, to hear other stories from our other friends around the province, and um, I'm really excited to do this project. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today. You're welcome. Hi there, my name is Stephanie and I work for the St. John's Public Libraries. And this is my haunted library encounter. Now this specific morning, I was working at the AC Hunter Library. And in the mornings before we open, the staff pulls the requested items off of the shelves and puts them on hold for the patrons that would like to check them out. There are usually a few on the list that are in our basement. The basement of the AC Hunter Library is a plethora of old, and new and archived and special collections that are not currently on the main floor of the library for one reason or another. For example, if there are two copies of a particular book on the main floor, we'll usually put one down in the basement. Anyways, this specific morning, I decided I would take the list of items needing to be pulled from the basement, took the keys with me onto the elevator and slowly lowered down to the bottom floor. I must have been the first human soul to be down there that morning because when the doors opened, it was pitch black. Now being a newer member of the staff, I had never had the task of turning on the basement lights before. I just stood there for a moment, frozen, not knowing what to do. 
Finally, after a few seconds had passed, I gained the courage I needed and slowly stepped out of the elevator and felt around the sides of the walls for the light switch. My hand suddenly hit something cold. Luckily, it was the light switch I was looking for. I flicked on the lights and the basement's rolling stacks came into view. I gained my composure, checked my list, and moved through the stacks to find the four or five books that I needed. Once I had came, had what I came for, I made my way back to the elevator doors, which happened to be between two desks, meaning that there couldn't really be anyone standing beside you while you waited, and certainly not during a pandemic when you need to physically distance. I pressed the up button and impatiently waited for the ancient elevator to lumber its way down to pick me up and bring me back to the land of the living. I was staring at the doors when it happened. In my periphery, to the left of my body, where a desk would be, I just see this pure black shadow as if someone was standing right beside me. I started and jerked my head to the left to see what could have clouded my per peripheral vision to be totally dark like that. It took me a second and I looked all around me, but I realized that there was nothing there. So the moment that I had internally convinced myself that it was nothing, just a trick of my eyes, the elevator door opened very noisily and I rushed on and held the closed doors button until the doors had closed and I was brought back up to the circulation floor with my other co-workers. I found out later after telling my colleagues what had happened that the ghost has made himself known to many of them in fact and that I shouldn't be nervous when something like that happens as he is quite friendly and benevolent and enjoys books and reading and that's why he has chosen to stay in our basement stacks. Despite the fear, feeling of fear that I had in the basement that day, I gained a sense of calm after learning this from the more experienced staff members.